Ever wonder how the moon came to be? You might be surprised to learn that its existence began with a bang. Picture this, an early stage Earth, much bigger than the one we know today, colliding with an object roughly the size of Mars. This object, known as Theia, met the proto-Earth in a violent celestial encounter that changed the course of our planet's history forever. This explosive event flung debris into the void of space, but rather than drifting aimlessly in the cosmos, this rubble coalesced, slowly but surely forming the moon we're familiar with today. This is what we call the giant impact hypothesis, and it's the prevailing theory about the moon's birth among scientists. But how do we know this? Well, modern research seems to provide us with compelling evidence. You see, the moon's composition is strikingly similar to that of the Earth's crust. This suggests that the material that makes up the moon likely originated from the early Earth, flung into space during the cataclysmic clash with Theia. Now let's put this into perspective. This colossal collision is believed to have happened roughly 4.5 billion years ago. It was a cosmic event so massive, it was a hundred million times larger than the meteor impact that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Just imagine the sheer force of that impact. So the next time you look up at the night sky, gazing at the moon's serene glow, remember its explosive origins. Its tranquil appearance belies a violent past, a testament to the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our universe. So the moon we gaze upon today is the result of a cosmic collision 4.5 billion years ago, a collision which was a hundred million times larger than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Scene script. Have you ever wished the moon was closer, just for a better view? Well, it used to be. Believe it or not, our moon began its life around 10 times closer to our planet than it is now. Picture this. You're stargazing on a clear night, and the moon appears 10 times bigger in the sky. A sight to behold, wouldn't it be? Back in those early days, the moon was so close that computer simulations suggest it could have been a mere 20 to 30,000 kilometers away. To put that into perspective today, our lunar neighbor sits at a comfortable distance of around 384,000 kilometers. Now that's a long trip if you're planning to drive. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Even now, after billions of years, the moon hasn't settled into a permanent spot. In fact, it's still moving away from us. Each year, as the Earth spins on its axis and the tides rise and fall, there's a transfer of energy to the moon. This energy nudges the moon a little bit further away from us, at a rate of about 3.78 centimeters per year. Think about that for a moment. It's almost as if the moon is trying to escape our gravitational pull, inching away bit by bit. But don't worry, it's not going anywhere fast. 3.78 centimeters per year is roughly the same rate at which your fingernails grow. So next time you clip your nails, remember, that's about how much further the moon has drifted away from us. So each year as you look up at the moon, remember it's slowly drifting away, at the same rate your fingernails are growing. What do you think moon dust smells like? Well, according to astronauts, it's quite explosive. You see, the surface of the moon is covered in a fine layer of dust that clung to the Apollo astronauts' suits like a stubborn shadow. Once they were back inside their lunar modules, they found themselves enveloped in a cloud of this dust. Now, you might expect moon dust to be odorless, but to their surprise, it had a distinctive smell. One astronaut, Harrison Jack Schmidt, from the Apollo 17 mission, even likened its scent to that of gunpowder. But this dust wasn't just a sensory surprise, it also caused a kind of lunar hay fever among the astronauts, with symptoms of sneezing and congestion that took days to disappear. Thankfully, the moon's lack of wind kept the dust from swirling around too much. So while the moon may look tranquil from afar, up close it's a dusty, sneezy affair. Ever wondered what the weather's like on the moon? It's more extreme than you might think. Now, you might be used to hearing about the weather forecast here on Earth with our mild winters and sweltering summers, but when it comes to our celestial neighbor, the moon, the story of weather takes a turn for the extreme. Without a protective atmosphere like ours, the moon's surface is exposed to the harsh realities of space, this means it experiences some truly mind-boggling temperature swings. For instance, when the sun's rays beat down on the lunar surface, the temperature can skyrocket to a sizzling 123 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the boiling point of water. But don't start thinking about lunar beach vacations just yet. Once the sun sets, the moon's lack of atmosphere means it can't hold on to that heat. As a result, the temperature plunges dramatically. We're talking about a bone-chilling negative 233 degrees Celsius. To put that into perspective, that's colder than the surface of Pluto. And these aren't brief fluctuations either. 
With a day on the moon lasting about 29 and a half of our Earth days, these scorching and freezing periods each last about two weeks. So if you were standing on the moon's surface, you'd experience about 14 Earth days of blistering heat, followed by 14 days of freezing cold. The moon's mean surface temperature also tells a tale of extremes. It averages out at a sweltering 107 degrees Celsius during the lunar day and a frosty negative 153 degrees Celsius at lunar night. So, whereas our Earth's weather offers a range of climates from the tropical to the polar, the moon's weather offers a range that's quite literally out of this world. Unlike our planet with its moderate climates, the moon experiences a temperature swing that could boil water and freeze it solid in the same day. Ever notice the moon's craters? They're more than just a pretty sight, they're a record of space history. Imagine the moon as a silent celestial historian, documenting the countless cosmic events that have shaped our solar system. Without an atmosphere to protect it, the moon's surface has been bombarded by meteorites, resulting in an intricate network of craters. In fact, there are millions of these craters on the moon, including 5,000 that are larger than 12 miles in diameter. These craters are like time capsules offering us a glimpse into the distant past. Because the moon's surface is dormant and experiences few geological forces such as volcanoes or erosion, it neatly stores pristine evidence of ancient formations and impacts. These craters provide invaluable information about the age, composition and history of our solar system, making the moon a magnificent cosmic archive. But there's more to the moon than its crater-covered surface. Ever wonder why we only see one side of the moon from Earth? This isn't a coincidence but a result of a phenomenon known as tidal locking or captured rotation. Just like Earth, the moon rotates around its axis, but it does so at the same rate it orbits the Earth, about 27 days. This synchrony between rotation and orbit means we only ever see one face of the moon, the near side. The far side of the moon, often referred to as the dark side, remained a mystery until the advent of the space age. Unlike the near side with its large dark planes called Lunar Maria, the far side is more cratered and rugged, with a thicker crust and less evidence of volcanic activity. So the moon is more than just a beautiful nightlight. It's a history book of our solar system, and a testament to the cosmic dance between the Earth and its celestial companion. From its cratered surface to its tidal locked rotation, the moon continues to intrigue and inspire us, reminding us of our place in the vast cosmos.